James Curtis chatting with singer, songwriter, and worship leader from Kitchener, Ontario, Dana Marie. Hello, Dana. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Very good. Now, you and I have a lot in common. Um, you grew up in a typical large Dutch family. Mm -hmm. uh, my family's Dutch as well. Okay. So, uh, actually, when I was, was out, when I was a kid, I was fluent in Dutch. Can't speak a word of it anymore. I can okay. still understand it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when I say typical, you have, you have a large family, don't you? Yeah, there's, there's five kids in my family, and my, sibling, or sorry, my parents both have four or five kids in their family who also have four or five kids. So when we all get together, it's, it's a big family. It's a big reunion. It's a big family. And, and are you the only girl? Like, it's all brothers? No, I have three brothers and one sister. Oh, okay. My sister's the oldest. Oof. Yes, well, I know. That's kind of a <laughs> for you, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, do you speak speak Dutch still, or no? There was a, a time my parents went away for a weekend, and so uh, my grandparents were watching us, and they were teaching me some Fries. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so I had a couple phrases I would throw out there once in a while, and of course you have your your little words that you say growing up, Dookie and oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, nobody else will understand what we're oh, talking okay, about. Yeah. But I understand exactly what you're saying. Now your family is very musical as well, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, mine is as well. Again, something in common. Um, I wonder. I wonder actually if that's a characteristic of Dutch families. I'm thinking. I'm thinking World War II. You know, people immigrated off to Canada, okay. and and during the war, like they didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. They didn't have anything. What else could they do? Let's pick Same. up an instrument exactly. and start singing and hey. playing an instrument. I never you know? thought about that. So I, that's 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 my excuse, anyways. There but you go. tell me what it was like when you were a kid, and I, and I'll and I'll I'll, I'll just mention the fact that when I was a kid and we went to family reunions, I mean, we were the kids, we got pushed off into a room, but, but the aunts and the uncles got together and they're, you know, digging out their instruments mm -hmm. and, and playing. What was it like for you? Yeah, I mean, especially in my immediate family, we were always singing. We, uh, we have a tape called the Hoekstra Choir. That's my maiden name, Hoekstra. And uh, it's hilarious listening to it back because we would go into the basement, we'd press record, and we would sing all these songs. And my sister, she's the oldest, and so she would be kind of introducing us. And it's just so funny listening to it back. And even home videos from when I'm probably two years old, you know, my dad would be filming, and it's always, Dana, you know, can you sing us a song? And so on the spot... I would start singing and performing. Uh, my dad was very musical. He uh, grew up in, the, in, in like a drum corps, so all his siblings would play a different instrument, kind of like in a marching band, and they would travel the world um, doing that, which is pretty cool. And my mom, she's always just been singing. She's you know leads worship at her church now, and she's always been just making up songs. You know, if it's dinner time, it's like she has some song to get us all around the table. And so I think every like. Yeah, every scenario there was there was something musical or creative or we were dancing or acting or yeah. We had a cowbell to get us to dinner. Okay. Yeah, one of these <laughs> antique little cowbells. We didn't have that. Yeah, I mean it, it must be a farm thing. Again, a lot of Dutch people are farmers yeah, as well, yeah. so maybe maybe that's what that was. I I can remember at our family reunions when everybody got together, um, and and similar to you when you're talking about everybody singing and stuff. I mean. Um, a lot of my aunts and uncles played instruments, so I can remember my one uncle break out his guitar. My other uncle would get out his uh, his uh, clarinet, mm -hmm. and, and I mean they never played during the day regularly. Right. So they get together at family reunion yeah. reunions, and you know my one uncle playing the guitar, his strings breaking all the yeah. time. My uncle playing the clarinet, squeaking like crazy. Yeah. My dad played the bass clarinet, and of course all the ladies singing and yeah. stuff. It was yeah. it was it was a lot of fun. But you know the thing I found about it was. Every re every reunion, they played the same songs yeah. over and over again, and they didn't get any better. No, they really did. I mean, they they really got progressively worse because they didn't practice, practice or rehearse or anything. Yeah. So it yeah. was like they were getting together for rehearsal, and they were just having a oh, you know yeah. grand old time. Oh yeah, for and we sure. would just laugh. Yeah, and we still do. Yeah, actually. Yeah, they don't play them anymore. Mm -hmm. Now you've got um, obviously with your brothers and your one sister, mm -hmm. and and people have married off and stuff, and you've got you've got uh, nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. Have you guys carried on that tradition, getting together at family reunions and and singing and stuff? Yeah, I, yeah, like, I mean, I'll always have my guitar around, and so my nieces and nephews, they always like to, there's a couple worship songs that they know really well, and so we'll sing those together. Um, I remember, I think it was last year that all the power went out everywhere, and my parents were watching my uh, niece and nephew at the time, so we all went over there. I think it was a really bad ice storm, maybe, oh, yeah. so we couldn't make it out to church. Um, but we had like our own little like worship service and so my nephew was on like a little drum and I was on my guitar and my niece was singing and so yeah I never really thought about it till now but definitely there's always always something musical going on. Now is it getting expensive with nieces and nephews at Christmas time? No. no I don't buy them anything. Oh. Well. <laughs> 
<laughs> problem solved. That's great. <laughs> Just kidding. We do, but we pick names in my family. Okay. Um, so I'll usually have like one gift to buy for a brother or a sister or whatever. So we'll just pick names, and then usually we'll all get my nieces and nephews just a little something. But um, yeah, we've always we we love spending time together, but we've never really been a big gift. Giving family, maybe that's not one of our love languages, no, maybe, if you will. Maybe it's a Dutch thing as well. Yeah, right? maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Could be that. <laughs> now, uh, you were involved, obviously, when you were younger in, in school choirs, musicals, uh, and that sort of thing growing up. Mm -hmm. um, was that just something you, you were driven towards because of your passion for music? Yeah. it was To me, it was just a no-brainer. It's like any time there was an audition to be in a school play or, or to sing a solo at the Christmas concert or do anything like that, it was like... I'm in, you know, I want to audition, I want to get involved. It was just like second nature. And then you lived in Australia for a couple of years. Yeah. What yeah. was that like? Oh, it was amazing. Um, so I went after high school. I did work for a couple months after high school because I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do. Um, but uh, yeah, I went in 2008 and 2009 uh, for their worship and creative arts program in the first year, but actually in the second year I switched into pastoral leadership. Uh, but I was still involved in musical for all my practical things. Just my classes were more pastoral leadership classes. So it was it was amazing. It was such a good experience. I learned so much. And why there? Why Australia? Yeah, um, I mean, at the time especially, like Hillsong kind of led the world in, in worship music. And um, the church I grew up in, um, I didn't even really know that much about Hillsong. Um, but I was really praying, you know, especially in grade 12 when you're trying to figure out, like, what do I want to be when I grow up? And uh, I, I always wanted to be a paramedic. That was it. Like all throughout high school, I did ride-alongs in the ambulance. Like that was it. I'm going to be a paramedic. And then it gets to grade 12, and you actually have to apply for things. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. And so that's why I just decided to work for a year after high school and just really seek God and like you know what He wanted me to do. Um, and that was a challenging time because you know most of my friends went off to college or university and they're moving out of home and having a great time. And uh, I was living at home working at a printing press, so pretty much by myself all day. And it was it was challenging. And I can remember one specific time just being like, God, like, please just tell me what to do. Like, I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything. I just want you to make it very, very obvious what it is that you want me to do. And so I did kind of have a, a pretty crazy encounter. I was visiting a friend. Um, and he told me that he had a friend that was going to Hillsong at the time. And, uh, you know, I should, uh, he was home for Christmas, so I should connect with him and find out what it's all about. And I kid you not, two minutes later, this friend walked through the door to surprise his friend. And that was one of the first times in my life that I was just like, God is definitely up to something. He's trying to show me something, trying to guide me. And uh, it was also the first thing I felt so much peace about. I just knew after talking to him, I'm like, this is where I want to go. Like, this is where I want to spend a couple years and just learn and grow. And um, and so even from that point, I only had a few weeks to apply, to hear back from them, and to get everything together in order to move to Australia. And I just watched God just line everything up. And so the only time I could actually think about what I was doing is when I'm sitting on a plane <laughs> on my way to Sydney, a bit Here like, goes. <laughs> all right, we're doing this. But again, God knows what we need. And I kind of just needed to be like, go, go, go and, until the point that I left. And then I was there for two years and just, it just learned so much. I really did. Did you develop an Aussie accent when you were there? No. no I, I don't think you really do. Some students do, but I, I believe it's fake. <laughs> Because sometimes if I'm in the States, I'll sort of pick up so that sort of like an American drawl, I guess. Yeah. But Australian's pretty different. So personally, I did not, but maybe some people do. So you were in Australia for two years and you, and you actually decided to come back to Canada? Yeah. And you know what? Again, it was, uh, it was definitely God bringing me back because I was very content to stay there. Um, it's, obviously, it's a great environment. Um, I could see myself living there forever and uh, just getting involved with the church. Um, but God had to do something pretty massive again to just kind of open my, my eyes to the idea of coming back to Canada. And so I was, I was very sure that God was bringing, you know, I was there for a time to be prepared and equipped in order to come back to Canada. For what? I had no idea. I just knew in my heart that it was like, it's time to come home and uh, we'll see what happens after that. So when did you start writing music? 
Was um, that around the same time? Was it before? Were you younger? Before. When I was yeah. younger. I yeah. mean, I have a couple journals with some hilarious songs that I've written. But it You'll was, be perfor performing some of those songs yeah. and those hilarious lyrics. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, maybe not. <laughs> um, but when I was at Hillsong is when, because I was in a songwriting class, right? So we okay. were forced to just spit out these songs or, or co-write in, in groups. So that's when I started actually recording some of the songs, even if just a quick little thing on my laptop. Um, so that's... Yeah, when I started writing more seriously. I guess one of your first songs um, off your first album, it's called I'll, I, I Will Fly or I'll Fly. Mm -hmm. What was, can you tell us about that song? What was yeah. behind that song? Sure. Uh, so there's a family um, that is close with my family and they had six six children. Uh, and the youngest, Are they Dutch? I think so. Well, there you go. I assume. <laughs> We went to church with them, so they must. Um, and their youngest name is Anna. And uh, she was born a perfectly healthy, beautiful baby girl and started to grow and develop like any other baby would uh, until it got to a point where um, she stopped developing and, and growing and actually started to degress and stop being able to use her hands and sit up. And so obviously her parents were concerned and, and took her to different appointments and found out that she was diagnosed with Rett syndrome. Um, and I really didn't know what this was at the time, but basically it's a, it's a neurological disorder that's found mostly in girls, and it just leaves these girls trapped inside their own bodies because they can't do what other girls can do. They usually can't walk, run around, talk, you know, explain what they need. And so um, that really, really, you know, hit me that, that Anna would be just trapped. And how and old was she at that time? She's just a baby. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so um, I just sat down at the piano and I wrote a song from Anna's perspective. And again, I really didn't know for sure if these are things she might be saying someday. Um, but after I, I wrote the song, I sent one of the first versions to her parents and just said, take a listen, like I can change anything, you know, let me know, but this is kind of what I was thinking. And, and they were really blown away and, you know, just really believing that this is something that that Anna would be trying to say, and not just Anna, but other girls that are also affected by Rett syndrome.
You got married three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, May 11th is your anniversary. It is. Thank you. Um, that's one day from mine. I'm oh. on May 10th. There you go. So there you go. <laughs> um, how did you meet em uh, Emerson? Uh, through a friend. Um, I went to watch a friend play soccer. She was on a co-ed, just like adult fun league. And so I went to watch her play and uh, Emerson ran the team at the time. There was just the one team. And uh, so, I mean, I, mean, I met everyone on the team pretty much, but he stood out a little bit. Well, because he was the leader. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> so. You guys are big soccer fans, mm -hmm. obviously. I mean, if he was coaching. Yeah. Um, do you still have season tickets to the uh, Toronto FC? We do. Catching yes. all the games? Yeah, I mean, it's been a pretty busy summer for me so far. So I've personally only gone to one, but in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to pretty much all of them. But Emerson is faithfully at every game. So Now, earlier this year, you also committed to a 5.30 a.m. swim routine. <laughs> yes. You did. Is that yeah. still happening? No. <laughs> You know, here Thanks I thought for you were this that up. <laughs> fit person playing soccer, oh, well, I am, yes. going to soccer games, and decide, hey, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to yeah. do the swimming thing every every morning at 5:30. Right. It's not happening you know, anymore. it lasted a long time. How long is um, a long time? Like a month or two. Oh, well, that's not yeah. bad actually. No, I, I actually surprised myself because we were like, let's just see how it goes. You know, let's not put any pressure, but we'll post it on Facebook just so we have some yeah. accountability. It's a problem. You post it on Facebook I know, now. Everybody, everybody knows. knows. You know. So, uh, you know what? Over the winter, it was really great because it kind of just got us up and we would meet there. And for me, you know, I'm I'm good with an accountability person. So, you know, I wouldn't dare let her down where she gets up and goes to the gym and she, and I'm not there. So, you know, we would we would meet there and we'd swim laps. And then I'd go to work and feel like a million bucks. So, so she's not doing it anymore either. No. So I would blame her. Yeah. You know, because she's not doing it anymore <laughs> and you need a partner and you were doing right, it for right. her. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Now, you've won a Covenant Award from the Gospel Music Association of Canada. You've mm -hmm. been nominated for a couple more. What's the message you want to bring through your music? I think a message of hope. Like, in, in whatever situation you're in, like, life doesn't always make sense to us. And we're always going to go through hard times. And, you know, there can be times where we just look to God and we're like, this just doesn't make sense. This is really painful what I'm going through right now. But just knowing that God sees the big picture um, and he's got the master plan and it doesn't make sense to us at all. Um, but we, we have a God that we can look to and to trust um, and that we know that our hope is in him. Um, and so that's also why I, I partner with Compassion Canada too because that is just bringing a message of hope. So I think that would be the one main thing. Now, You've mentioned about the different circumstances that you go through in life. I know some songwriters get their inspiration when they're when they're in a valley. Some others mm -hmm. when they're um, having a mountaintop experience. A even a few uh, when they have a breakup. Mm -hmm. um, what gets your creative juices flowing to write songs? That's a good question because, I mean, each song is sort of written a little bit differently. Um, I do believe that I have the gift of, of kind of stepping in somebody else's shoes and kind of seeing things from their perspective, um, writing a song that maybe they might be going through. Um, so almost like a, a gift to them. But definitely for myself, I've had songs where I was going you know, through a hard time and I wrote a song from that or out of a conversation that I had with a friend. Um, so that's a hard question because each song is sort of written a little bit differently. Yeah. You play the guitar. Mm -hmm. You also play the piano. Mm -hmm. What else, what else do you play? My voice. <laughs> okay. I play the radio, so yeah. that's great. <laughs> Actually, I, I have played musical instruments in the past. I, yeah. I took piano lessons way back when. I took guitar lessons. That didn't really last. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you take a musical instrument in school, yeah. so I played clarinet, bass clarinet, saxophone. Right. And so I can play whatever, the flute. So. Okay. Band in high school played the flute. There you go. There's a third instrument. Yeah, player. and recorder, time, uh, tone oh, chimes. Oh yeah, I did. Tone I, chimes, I, I did the break. recorder too. Yeah, yeah that's so, great. I can flute. add that to the resume. Yeah. <laughs> Your song "Love You More" was uh, nominated for Pop Song of the Year at the 2015 Covenant Awards. What was the inspiration behind that song? That song was basically like just a conversation I was having with a friend. Uh, I was just going through a really busy season of life. Um, I just got engaged, and so we we're planning a wedding. We bought a house, and I was working at a few different places, um, doing teaching at different places, plus working at Starbucks in the mornings, um, trying to write and record the second album. I just felt like I was running and like fast forward all the time. 
Um, and so I was having a conversation with a friend just about how, you know, we weren't created to be these machines that just work, 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 and just, you know, do all this stuff. But we were just created just to, to love God and to be in relationship with God and to be his hands and feet to people around us. And when we're always just running around like crazy people, it's, it's actually hard to do that. And so this song is just sort of about that. Like at the end of the day, I just want to love you more. You know, I don't need to accomplish all of these things every day, but you know, every day it is important to connect with God and to grow your relationship with him because that's what we were created for. already got two albums out and that's mm -hmm. a relatively short amount of time considering when you came back from from Australia you, you've also been touring like crazy um, you recently toured out west with another well-known Canadian artist Chelsea Amber yeah. um, how many cities did you guys perform in uh, 13 I think because well that might be a lie uh, because we did 13 um, gigs in two weeks so like one a day type thing Pretty much. We had one day wow. off. Um, yeah, that makes sense. We did a couple radio stops as well, but yeah, we had something every single day except for one. And you, so. you pretty well drove to all the venues, didn't you? To all of them. From wow. Yeah, we started here. Chelsea met me in, in Kitchener, um, so she did the first bit by herself. She was just driving. She didn't do any gigs, and so she picked me up, and then we drove from Kitchener to Revelstoke, B.C., and just kind of stopped all along the way. Yeah, and, and this isn't the first time you've toured with Chelsea, is it? No, nope. no, we've done a few tours. And yeah. you actually decided to, I know, you know, do it That's again. Pretty good. <laughs> Didn't learn from the first time, did you? We get along really well. Uh, yeah, she's a good friend of mine, and, and our music also just kind of 
we're probably geared to the same type of people, so it works out well to, to do stuff with her. Does your band mascot, Jordy, get to come with you on, oh, on any wish. of these gigs? <laughs> I wish. That would be a lot of fun, but uh, I usually leave him home, and my husband takes care of Jordy. And, um, but and Jordy's he, the dog. Yes, Jordy's my dog. And, um, I mean, I work from home most days, so he's not really used to being alone. So usually I have somebody every single day stopping in in the afternoon, a friend or my mom or Emerson's mom, just to kind of say hello and let but him out. But you could have brought him. You could have brought him. You know. Next time. Next time. Maybe. Um, so when you're not performing, when you're not writing music or teaching music, what are you doing? Um, like work-wise or just like with just my life? with your life. What are you doing? I mean, um, besides soccer. soccer games, yeah. <laughs> Um, hanging out with friends. I love, I love to just be able to, to connect with people and have good, meaningful conversations. Um, of course, walking Jordy and bringing him to the dog park and all that fun stuff. Um, I wish I could say that I read more because I really do like reading, but I feel like that's one of those things where it's like at the end of the day when everything is done and accomplished, I can sit down with a good book. And yet, as you probably know, that never really happens. So it's kind of like on holidays. My problem read. with reading a book is not, I like to read a good novel. My problem is I, I will pick up that book and I will be doing that for the next three hours. I will finish okay. that book. You can't stop me. You can't yeah. tear me away from that book yeah. to eat or, or do anything. Yeah. So I need a you know a, a defined amount of time. of time to read that yeah. to read that book. Yeah. So what? I don't get to read as much as I'd no. like to as well. When I'm so. on holidays, that's like all right, I'm going to read a couple books. Um, but yeah, from day to day, I don't read as much as I wish I could. Um, but otherwise, yeah. So what's what's on the go now, moving forward? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, whether it be a new album, uh, what you're what you're focusing on in ministry, what what yeah. are you what are you doing? Well, right now, uh, my focus is just to continue touring and to be kind of um, known as a, as a worship leader, as a worship artist across Canada, but specifically here in Ontario. Um, Makes it easier for the drive, right? It does, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Canada's large. Um, so I've been doing a lot of women's conferences and youth events and um, leading worship on a Sunday morning at, at different churches, presenting compassion. So that's kind of my focus right now is just to connect with pastors and leaders and, and just try to... Um, get out as much as I can, um, but there's always writing because I would love to do another album, specifically a worship album. Um, I mean, yeah, and to be able to present one of my worship songs at a church when I do, because I, I will most often just do all familiar songs so people can jump on board right away. Uh, but if I can throw in one of my own and, and teach it to people, that would be a lot of fun as well. So, yeah, that's that's kind of my goals right now. That's great. Well, yeah. appreciate you dropping by to chat. You can uh, check out more of Dana Marie's music on her website. You can uh, book her to lead worship at your event and you can get the links to her social media pages and her website, danamariemusic.com. And thanks for checking out our Dana Marie Joy radio special. You can